the classification of amino acid to understand that first uh, what is basic meaning of amino acid is see we know carbon is having four valency if one of the valency is having a amino group and acidic group at the same time amino group acidic group then this molecule is referred as amino acid now what about the rest of the two valencies the rest of the the two valency one valency is hydrogen and the fourth valency can be anything so i am writing r r stands for any group so this is how the basic structure of amino acid is but now what is happening is uh, what is the meaning of alpha amino acid amino acid is amino group and acidic group but what is alpha amino acid to understand this what is alpha carbon that we need to understand see in the 11 12th class we used to do the carbon numbering for example here is a carbon chain and it is having a functional group that is acid if i want to do the carbon numbering uh, carbon numbering i can do like this this is the carbon number 1 2 3 like this we start the functional group, uh, we start the numbering from the functional group. There is one more method. The carbon which is next to the functional group is called as alpha carbon. Then is the beta carbon, then gamma, delta. Likewise, that is also one more numbering system is there. So I can say alpha carbon is carbon next to functional group. The carbon which is next to functional group is called as alpha carbon. If I apply this concept on amino acid, what I can say is, it will be like this. For example, here is the acidic group. This is the functional group. If I apply this uh, numbering system of alpha beta on the amino acid, this is the acidic group. The carbon next to the uh, acidic group, that is means the functional group, this is going to be the alpha carbon. Then if the R is a carbon chain, then is the beta, ga, gamma, delta, epsilon, it will be like this. So I can say that in most of the amino acid, the amino group is actually attached to the alpha carbon. The amino, the amino group is attached to the alpha carbon. So this is called as alpha amino acid. If I apply the concept of alpha carbon here, the amino group is attached to alpha carbon, so it's the alpha amino acid. And in humans, in humans, most of the amino acid are found in alpha form. There are just few exceptions, such as beta alanine. In beta alanine, the amino group will be attached to beta carbon. Then we have the beta amino isobutyrate. There are few examples where the amino group is not attached to alpha carbon, rather it is attached to the beta carbon. Among them, the important example is the beta alanine. If they want to ask you which of the following is not alpha amino acid, they will give you the options like this, glycine, valine, alanine. Obviously, they will not write beta alanine, but that makes it very obvious. So alanine, it is found in the beta form. This is one concept. The next concept is, what is the meaning of D and L amino acid? We always see where is the, the amino group. If the amino group is on the left side, then this is called as the L amino acid. If the amino group is on the right side, then we will say it's a D amino acid. So we have two types of amino acid, L and D, depending where is the amino group. If it is on the left side, it's L, it is found in humans. Whereas the D amino acid, they are found in bacteria. That is why in pharmacology, you have discussed that whenever we make an antibody, uh, sorry, antibiotics, they are designed in such a way that they are going to, uh, they are going to destroy the D amino acid only. The antibiotics are designed against the D amino acid because D amino acids are in the bacteria. For example, you will discuss in microbiology, for example, Vibro cholera. Vibro cholera is having which amino acid? D methionine, D leucine, D tyrosine. So basically there are D amino acids are there. In the same way, bacillus subtilis, it is having the methionine, D-methionine, D-leucine. So the D-amino acids are found in the bacteria and the antibiotics, they are designed against the D-amino acids. The, but there is one drug, for example, bleomycin, that works against the D-amino acid as well as L-amino acid both. Means bleomycin is a drug that is going to affect the humans as well as bacteria both. But why we want to affect the human cells? Why we want to kill the human cells? Because of cancer. So the cancer drugs that we are going to make, they, they can be designed against the D and L amino acid both because in cancer cells, we are going to have the L amino acids. So bleomycin, it is used for what? It is used for testicular cancer. Can you tell me that from your pharma? What is the side effect of bleomycin? One very important question. Yes, bleomycin, what is the side effect? Bleomycin, butch sulfan, what is the side effect of them? Yes, they lead to pulmonary fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis. Yes, rightly said, Dr. Kishore. Now, the next concept. What is amino acid? See, in the amino acid, 
if you look at the amino group and acidic group, the amino group is here, the acidic group is here, and the amino group is normally free. It is not bound in any ring. But by chance, if the amino group is bound in a ring structure like this, then this is called as amino acid. So amino acid is the amino group is bound in the ring structure. The amino group is bound in the ring structure. It's called as amino acid. If the amino group is bound in the ring structure, it's called as amino acid. And what is the name of this ring? It is the pyrrolidine ring. The amino group is not free, instead bound. This is called as amino. And what is the example of amino acid? Proline. This is the second very important question that which of the which of the following is example of amino acid? Proline. Which of the following is not alpha amino acid? What is the answer for that? Which is not alpha amino acid? Alanine. Alanine is beta form. And which of the example is amino acid? Proline. The last general concept. What is Kidale carbon? We know that carbon is having four valencies and if all the four valencies are different, for example, on valency number one, there is A. On the valency number uh, second, we have the B group. Here we have the C group. Here is D group. If all the four valencies are different, if all the four valencies are different, such carbon is called as Kirill carbon. When we were in the schools, we used to make the mirror image, if you remember. If you want to make a mirror image, that is only possible if the molecule contains a Kirill carbon. If we are having a Kirill carbon, then we can make the mirror image. If we don't have a Kirill carbon, we can't make a mirror image. So Kirill carbon is required to make the mirror image. Now let's apply this concept on amino acid. If you look at the structure of glycine, this is glycine amino acid. Here you can see the one valency is amino group, second valency is acidic group. But if you look at the third and fourth valency, third hydrogen, fourth is also hydrogen. So it's not a Kirill carbon. And if it is not a Kirill carbon, we can't make a mirror image. Glycine is the only amino acid which does not have a Kirill carbon. And because there's no Kirill carbon, no optical activity. Glycine does not have the Kirill carbon. So it is optically inactive. It is optically inactive. Right? So what are the four questions that we have discussed so far? The four questions that we have discussed, yes, quickly answer. All are alpha amino acid except beta alanine. Very good. Humans have which amino acid? D or L? Which amino acid the humans are having? Humans are having the L amino acid, whereas the bacteria are having the D amino acid. Bacteria are having D amino acid. Amino acid, the only example of amino acid? Proline. And which amino acid is optically inactive, not having the Kirill carbon? The answer is glycine. Right. So far, we have discussed this. The basic idea about the amino acid. Now comes the real topic of this chapter. Classification of amino acid. See, how many amino acids we have total? In humans, we are having 22 amino acids. Now, for example, let's say right now there are 22 students in the classroom and I want to classify you. The first question that what you will ask is on what basis you want to classify us? What I can classify on the basis of your medical school. Yes, someone is from Kerala, someone is from Karnataka, Rajasthan, right? I can classify you on the basis of your medical school. I can classify you on the basis of your year of birth. I can classify you on the basis of your right now, which year you are in, right? So whenever the classification comes, the first question that should be there is on what basis, on what ground we want to classify the things. So the first classification of amino acid that we are discussing is based on the R group. Now look at this structure. Look at this amino acid. Here is the amino group. Here is the acidic group. And the third valency is hydrogen and the fourth can be anything. This is anything. So on the basis of this, we are going to classify means what? There will be some amino acid. They will contain alcohol instead of R, right? At R, they will be having alcohol. They are alcohol containing. Some of them will contain sulfur. Some of them will contain branch carbon chain. So based on this R group, we have divided subcategories. The first subcategory is simple amino acid. Simple amino acid means instead of R group, the R group is replaced by either a simple hydrogen or a simple carbon. If instead of R group, we are having a simple hydrogen or carbon, that is called a simple amino acid. And the example is glycine and alanine. Glycine is the simplest amino acid that we have. The searches are not very important, but what is to remember is what is simple amino acid? The R is replaced by either hydrogen or carbon. We can say that Ghana is a simple thing to do. Ghana is a simple thing to do. So the mnemonic is Ga. Ga stands for the glycine and alanine. Ghana is a simple thing to do. Ghana is a simple thing to do. Glycine and alanine. Very good. <clears throat> the alanine 
is the most common amino acid that we have in our body. The most common amino acid that we have in the body, it is LNA. The simplest structure, glycine. Coming to the next category, single category. The branch chain amino acid. The branch chain amino acid is, for example, see, in every medical school right now, we have so many different, different students from different, different colleges. Every medical school, there is one student who knows all the batchmates and all the batchmates knows him. He knows all the juniors, all the seniors, all the professors. He knows everyone. Everyone knows him. And whom we call is the Neta, the politician of our batch. Right? Now, you and me, we are not Neta, but that guy is the Neta. Why? How he is having such a huge relationship? How is maintaining such a huge relationship? To maintain such a huge or branch relationship, the person has to be live-hearted. To have a branch relationship, the person has to be live-hearted. So the branch in amino acids, live. To have a branch relationship, the person has to be live-hearted. Leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Now the next one. Here you can see, see, the R group. Look at the R group. Instead of R, we are having a branch carbon chain. Instead of R group, we are having a branch carbon chain. These structures are just to make you understand. No need to remember those structures. I want to make you understand what is the meaning of branch chain. Instead of R, we are having a branch carbon chain. Now comes the third category, your favorite one. The alcohol containing amino acids. Alcohol containing amino acids. Alcohol means the hydroxyl group containing amino acids. The example of alcohol containing amino acid. Yes, rightly said. Serine and threonine. Serine and threonine. Now, what is, the, what is the meaning of that? Serine and threonine. See here, 